Gilgal Christian Center, where birds roll away. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
We're not going to go into the definition like we did already because I've done that already. But where I'm going today is to look at the benefits of others' awareness. The benefit of others' awareness. What are those things that will help you to have others' awareness? What are those things that others' awareness will do to you? So being others aware is not just about knowing and appreciating how others feel and behave. It goes beyond that. Number one, to be others aware is to help them attain a position of her. So you, you are not just trying to feel the way they feel for to get to be sympathetic. You know, sometimes we become sympathetic. We, we feel, oh, okay, it's gonna be alright. That's good. It's good to say all those positive things. It's gonna be alright, things will be better. That's not enough. You are not being others aware just to tell them it's gonna get better. Anybody can do that. But you need to go beyond that, number one, to attain a position of what? Help. You're going to help them to attain a position of help, relief, or understanding. Let's look at the, the word of God. Matthew chapter 14, verses 34 to 36, will help us to, to understand better what it means to help people to attain a position of help, relief, or understanding. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of the Genesare. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that. Now listen, underline that. He said, when the men of Genesaret had knowledge of Jesus Christ, what did they do? He said, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him now underline that word and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched were made perfectly whole Amen. what is the meaning of that there are key things you must understand when the men of Gennesaret heard that Jesus Christ was in town. Now, they did not want to keep this news to themselves alone. Now, for them to arise and begin to seek, it means that these people had been what? Empathetic. They had understood what many people in those communities were going through. They really wanted to do what they could do to help them. So it's just being empathetic is not just enough to say, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to get better. It goes beyond that. It means you need to try to help these people to attain a position of help, release, or understanding. That is one of the things that, that others' awareness will do. Many times are Christians. We are so fond of trying to calm people down, make them feel good, and when they leave, and that's all they got. No, it should go beyond that. So these people, obviously, from this verse, had, had empathy. They had understood. They had others' awareness. They knew what these people were going through. And when they heard uh, a healer was in town, what they did, they sent news all over, not just that, and they brought them, not just that, they begged Jesus. Let them just touch the hem of your garment. Amen. That's what other awareness can do. There are three things here, so you can understand better. Number one, they saw verse, you look at verse 35. They went out into all the surrounding you know, country to search for those who needed the healing and saving touch of Jesus Christ. Do you know what that thing? It takes a lot. It takes someone that really cares to hear that something good is about to happen. They don't keep to themselves. They start calling you because they know that you need this help. How many of us can do that? It takes a heart of empathy. It takes a heart of care. It takes a heart of love. That's what others are when they do. It makes you have empathy. It makes you feel. It makes you care. It makes you love others. Because it's not all about yourself. So they saw, they looked. Who needs 
hand. Who needs the healing? Who needs salvation? There's a man in the house, a healer, a deliverer. There is a savior. How many of us will do that? How many of us will hear good news? And you want to talk to someone you feel bad. It because in the first place, you might not know who you have because you're not caring for anyone. It's all about yourself. Because if you've been caring for others, you will realize that this person might need help. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you're not caring for someone else, it's all because most of the time we get so engrossed in ourselves, in our troubles. You know, you don't want to relate with anyone else. Everyone is uh, your enemy. And uh, this person, you are envious of others. Mm. You are so jealous. And yet tomorrow you want God to bless you. God bless me. How do you think God blesses people? So they went out looking, searching. How many of us? There are people today that do not know Jesus Christ. There are people that are dying. Yeah? They have not given their life to Christ. Yeah? How many of us who, who claim to be born again, children of God, how many of us really care that these people are perishing? How many of us will pick the Bible and go out to preach the message of the good news and, and bring souls to Christ so that they can be saved? Yeah? That comes out of the heart of care. That comes out of the heart of empathy. Without that, it is difficult. If you are do not, if you are not others aware, you will not care what they are going through. Is it the principle of Christ comes from a heart of empathy? You really want this people to be saved. So that's the one. They saw number two. They brought. They went, they go, look, look, knock on. I'm sure they were knocking on the door. Hey, I knew, I remember last week you were complaining about that your leg, there is a healer. I remember you were complaining about deliverance, what you are going through because I see you are going through so much. There's someone I know is in town. This man, if he lays on you, things will start to take shape. Come, they brought them. I'm sure some of them were, were actually brought in a baby horse that time or something. To come and encounter the saving touch of our Lord Jesus Christ. They brought them. How many of you would take your car and go pick some members that do not have right to the church? You'll be worried about gas. You'll be worried about how you have to wake up so early to go bring someone else. You'll be worried about how they're going to dirty your car. Huh? It is, it is because there's no empathy. You do not care about what others are going through. The moment you get to that realization, wisdom detects that you care more for others than even yourself. They brought them. They brought them. Because you know, to go, to go pick someone else, you mean that you're going to need to wake up early, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do that. Yeah, because you want, you want to come to church. Uh, some of you that come early at all, you come on the dot 10. And those other ones walk in by 11.30. I'm sure some people will say they come again. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you to see why there's someone walking in? Okay, <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, you mean because you want to go pick someone that's going to wake up early now. I you don't want to do that. You don't want to work there. You don't want to work there. You, know? you don't have time. It's, I want you to stay, pay attention. It is impossible to be a good child of God if you do not care for others. Mm. Understand what I'm just telling you now. If you are that type, you don't care for others. It's all about me, 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 me. It's like the whole world is coming to get you. Everyone is your enemy. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you will not go far. Not just in things of God, in your own personal life. Yeah. That's the truth. These people went and brought. Now, the third one is that they begged. Because they said they besought him. You know what it means? They begged Jesus. Lord, please. I know there are a lot more coming. Please don't leave here. Please, please. These people. 
people need help, please. This is the only opportunity they might have to be healed, to be blessed. I'm sure there were a lot of people coming and Jesus was about to leave. They went, I'm sure, probably they went on their knees. Lord, please, just, just tarry for one hour, one more hour, I'm begging you. Who will go to that extent to beg for others? Who will go to that extent? Only someone that cares genuinely. Only someone that had seen what others are going through. Others are witness. Sometimes something happened in the church, for instance. And the members say, oh, I'm not going back to that church. He person did this to me. And you heard what you do. It's not for you to do something. It's not my sister. Even me. If you see what they did to me last two weeks. I don't blame you, Jerry. You can go. <laughs> you know, me, so I'm looking, I don't know, maybe how long, I don't know how long I'm going to be there. That's what you do. Because we don't even care about the church. Not even care for that soul that's about to go. Because if we did, you would not say that. You would not do that. They said they beg Jesus, please, a little bit more. One more hour. If you can just wait. And they were not begging for themselves. They were begging for others. Mm. <laughs> others are witness. When you tell about love, you tell about love. How do you love? This is an expressive demonstration of love. You just they say, love God with all your heart, whatever. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, if you do not know what your neighbor is going through, you can love your neighbor. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So all of the witness is to put a push on where you be, these people will receive help, healing, whatever they need. Number two, all of the witness enables you to practice your calling. Hmm. This is key. Look, listen to me. Most of us will not know the call of God upon your head until you start interacting with others. Mm -hmm. So true. Oh, maybe you don't know that. So true. It is when you start getting to know what is going on in people's lives, mm -hmm. getting to feel the way they feel, being empathetic, caring. Before you realize it, you start practicing that. Some talents you never even knew you have. For instance, you go, you see a sister going through so much, and you're trying to console her. Before you know it, you start praying for her. Before you realize it, you find out that ah, maybe this is what God has called me to do. You start praying for more than one sister, to that brother, to that person, to this other person. Or maybe before you know it, you start counseling. You don't even know you could counsel. You didn't even know that was a gift from God. Mm. Because it start by caring for others. It start by understanding them, trying to understand what others are going through. And before you realize it, you are walking in your gift, in your talent that the Lord has given to you. Which means that without you being others aware, you might not even realize you have this gift. Without you picking the Bible to go try to win souls, you might not even understand that you can preach the word of God. Right. <laughs> it is only after interaction with others that some of us start practicing our gifts. Some of you think that it's everybody that will stand like I'm doing now and preach. <laughs> Most of us are not called to stand like this. It's the call. It's not what I wanted, but it's what I cannot do without, because I have no choice. And only few are called and chosen to stand like this, minute. But the rest of us can preach powerfully that standing here by interacting with others out there, mm -hmm. which is even more powerful than standing here to preach. But you will not know that if you do not interact 
You will not know that if you do not genuinely care, feel what others are feeling. You cannot understand that. Look at Nehemiah. We look at Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 2. The king they was saw the countenance of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was worried about it. The walls of Jerusalem, he was praying and fasting. And the countenance changed. When he went to serve the king, the king looked at him and said, Look, wait a minute. There's something different about you. You are counting. What is going on? Why? Because the king was others aware. He wanted to know what was going on in the mind and heart of Nehemiah. There are many people that could have seen Nehemiah and they would do nothing about it. They wouldn't even ask any question. By the time you see your brother or sister, you see this is not the normal person that you used to see. And you don't even care. You don't ask sister, what is going on? Or oh, brother, what is, how can we help? How can the church help? No. Because you do not even care. Our fellowship of said is all about you. But that was not what the king, the king saw the countenance. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 13 to 15. Eli saw the countenance of Hannah. He mistook that to be drunkenness. But when he, he got the proper understanding, yeah, what did he do? He released prophetic pronouncement. Oh, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. What? He, he, he saw the countenance of Hannah. And he knew that this is not how this woman supposed to be. He felt the pain. Do you feel the pain of others? Do you feel the pain of what others are going through? If you cannot feel the pain, you are not others aware. If you can't feel the pain, you are not empathetic. Mm. And if you can't feel the pain, you can't express love. <coughs> that is the truth. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Am I speaking to someone this morning? Yes. <laughs> you look at, uh, let's look at 2 Kings chapter 5. It releases some powerful revelation when it comes to these others and weddings. We look at verse 2. The little maid who waited on that man's wife. What did she do? She was so concerned about the state of her of Naaman that she wished that she had, he had gone to the prophets of God in Israel for healing. I mean, look at the maid. All in that she had not been there. I mean, she was so low in the ranking there. Nobody would care about her. She was a maid. In fact, not just a maid, a slave maid. There's a difference between you know, hiring a maid that you pay and a slave maid. So probably this little girl was not even paid. And you will understand the kind of labor they will put her through. But this girl saw how Naaman was suffering. Naaman was the captain, the chief captain in the king's army. A prominent man, obviously second to the king. And look at the little house slave maid. What happened? She saw what that man was going through. And she went to the man and said, if you were in Israel, in my country, there are prophets that can heal this master. In my country. Because she knew. She cared. She wanted to see this man heal. Look at verse 7. And that's the second Kings. <laughs> you know, chapter 5. The king of Ashina sent a letter to the king of Israel. I said, look, I'm sending my second command to you to be healed. The king became troubled. The king was like, uh-uh, am I a healer? This man is looking for my trouble. How can you say you are sending someone to me to be healed? Ah, uh, he's looking for an opportunity for war. This was a strong army, if you must understand. The king of Israel became afraid. But as he was being tormented, something happened. The Bible said, Prophet Elisha saw him, heard him. Others are witness. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I want to understand something. 
Prophet Elisha heard him, saw him, saw how frantic he was desperate. He was angry. He didn't know what to do. And Prophet Elisha said, do not fret. Ask him to come. And I will show him the power of the God of Israel. Amen. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Two things. One, Prophet Elisha wanted to help the king out. He said, look, don't worry. I can see you. I can feel you. I see the pain, the agony you are going through right now. Because you are thinking this man is trying to use this to cause a war. But you know what? Because of the God that oppressed in my life, yes. I'm going to step in and help that situation. Yes. To free you from that pain. Yes. And to prove to this man that there's a God in his world. Yes. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That was how many went and got healed. And got healed. Others are went. It started from what? Others and when from that little, in fact, the little slave girl had no name. Mm -hmm. She had no name. How many of us would be in that kind of situation and still want to help my guy? Okay? Mm -hmm. You even know whether the madam treated her well. Mm -hmm. The women, they know how to deal with aspects. <laughs> but the women don't want to talk. The sisters don't want to talk. I said, you guys know how to deal with housemates. In Africa, not yet. <laughs> Amen. Shout hallelujah. So you can see classic demonstration of others' awareness from the Bible. From that second Kings chapter 5. From the little maid to even prophet Elisha. You see, it is because you want something. You see, it's not just enough. What I just said now demonstrates the fact that others the witness is not just about you knowing, feeling the pain. It's about you doing something to help. What can I do? You should be putting yourself in the position of what can I do to help? No matter how little. It doesn't have to be like a big thing. Even prayer alone is a big help. Even counseling. There are people that would not have committed suicide if only someone spoke to them for just one or two minutes. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As we bring this message to an end, others are witness will help you to insulate yourself from toxic people and relationships. What does it mean to insulate, to protect, to shield yourself? But it's not the way not supposed to feel how others feel, feel their pain, uh, understand what they're going through. Exactly, that's what it is. But you see, in the process of doing that, you will come across some people that are irredeemable. You, there's nothing you can do to redeem them. It's only the Holy Spirit. You will come across some people that you can only help from a distance. You will come across some people that no matter how you try to help, they think you owe them. Others and winners will help you to know who to keep as friends and who to let go. Interaction with people. Yes, it's a genuine need for her. But there are people that no matter what you do, and for such people, you need to stay away from them. Wow. Just stay long. Far away. Yeah. There are people that no matter you can do all you want to do, they still think you owe them. They become entitled. You know, they feel like you should have done more. And when you look back, there's nobody in this family, in their family, or this person at all, that has ever helped you. you. May they still feel entitled. Uh -huh. oh. There are people that you stay away. In fact, there are people that, if you want to interact with them at that level, they pull you with them. Damn. You know what? It's like somebody is in a pit, right? 
When you are trying to get somebody out of the pit, you need to be very careful. Yeah, you're still your ground. Oh, you know that? Yeah. You need to fend yourself uh, yeah. a little bit far away from the mouth of the pit mm-hmm. and try like this. Because if you don't take time, as you try, they pull you with them. Yeah. It's very prophetic. Yeah. You pull, they can pull you in. Jesus. So you see, others and witness will help you. We look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, it says something. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. We think that people that no matter what you preach or how you preach or if you don't take time, they will convert you. So others are where they, by understanding these people, by getting to know them, see where they come from, they pathetic, try to help, you will come to a time where you see, you know what, it's time to stop. It's time to distract myself. It's time to get away from this crowd. Otherwise, I'm going to be like them. So others are where they will help you to insulate yourself. From toxic people mm-hmm. and toxic relationships. Mm-hmm. When we say help, help, there's a limit to help. Mm-hmm. You need to understand that you're not God. Thank you. The problem that many of us have is that we still put our same devotion on. I think God, they're not God. Mm-hmm. I realized that the hard way. <laughs> no, you're not God. <laughs> help to a limit. Understand how to say no. Know when to abstain and know when to mix with. Don't put yourself in a position of the God because you are not. You can't have the whole world. You are not Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some people that cannot be helped except by the Holy Spirit. No matter what you do. As to such people, you can abstain yourself. Amen? Amen. Let's bring this message to an end and bring others and witness to an end today. Note this point as we wrap up this. There are empirically, you know, tested steps to develop awareness of others. Number one, you need to create time to get to know other people or the people you associate with. Create time. It will take time. What they enjoy their challenges, their personalities, their beliefs. Though to be others aware, you need to create time. There's no way you're going to get to know people if you do not invest time. Don't you know by calling people on phone and speaking for 30 minutes, it is the time you could have used it, uh, I mean, you could have used for something else? There's some people that when you call them on phone, you, need, you better get ready. <laughs> you will have finished your meal and everything and turn up TV. Because they're going to take you on that ride for two hours. <laughs> Even as you want to drop the phone, you will say, Sister, so I was trying, in fact, at that point, you start lying. Sister, I was trying to cook. Sister, I was, even though you're not cooking, because you just want to, so it's time to stop. <laughs> Amen. Shout out, hallelujah. When you were not supposed to lie, you start lying. Because no one to hurt sister. <laughs> Number two, so you gotta you gotta invest that. Number two, observe and be mindful of how others are feeling in their body language. Now, let me understand. You will know more about people through body language than even what they tell you. The body language. The facial expression yep. and the tone of their voice. These are some of the ways you're going to need to know people. Sometimes I'll see someone in this church and see the way I look at you and say, uh, uh, Brother, is everything okay? Because I know there's something, even though he's not telling me, I can sense it, I can see it. Obviously, something's off. So you will know more about people through body language, facial expression, and tone of their voice. 
And you must adapt yourself to better appreciate and understand what is it for our growth. Number three, be inquisitive. You need to start asking questions. There's no way you're going to know people if you don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. Some people say, I don't want to be disturbed. No, be disturbed. That's part of what you're expected to do. You need to ask important questions. Ask questions about their thought, their emotion, their perception. Ask questions about their upbringing. Ask questions about the pain that they're going through. These are some of the ways you're going to get to know people, to feel what they feel, understand the pain that they're going through. Recognize other people's hard work, their contribution, thought, emotion, and viewpoint. To learn to appreciate where they're coming from. When you want to start that conversation, don't start with on a bad tone. Tell them, look, it, it's going to get better. Look at where God takes you from. If you ask the right question, you will understand how God has been in your life. And you will use that to actually counsel them. Engage others when making decisions. Don't decide alone. Bring others on board. And see. Because some people, them, when some people bury themselves in the work of God, they start to drop some emotions. When people get busy, some bad emotions start going away because they don't have time to start, you know, dwelling on all those anger issues and all that. But when they are, they say, <laughs> they say, I know what, I know mine. In the devil's workshop, which is true. When you are idle, all sort of thoughts start coming in, and before you know, you start acting on them. But when you are very busy, believe me, so create time, get those people busy, mm -hmm. so that some of this stuff will go away. Shout hallelujah. Today we bring, to, we bring to an end others awareness, the second attribute of wisdom, of wisdom. So to have wisdom, you must be others aware. Because through this interaction, relationship, understanding, you get to exercise your gift, your talents. <laughs> you get to know when to draw the line. You get to know the kind of people to associate with. And so on and so forth. And that is driven by wisdom. Without wisdom, you think everyone is the same. It's not. Without wisdom, you will not care about others. You will only be about yourself. And you can see, by caring for others, you can actually fulfill destiny. And therefore, wisdom will do to help you to fulfill destiny. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet. I want to start speaking to the Lord. This is the last Sunday, the month of October. How time flies. We're almost at the end of the year. Be with the Lord. You need to talk to the Lord right now. You need to talk to the Holy Spirit. The year is coming to an end. We need wisdom. There are many things you need wisdom to be able to accomplish. Even in the next few months that we have left here. The Bible says, if you lack wisdom, you can ask. It's your place to tell the Holy Spirit. I need wisdom. There are many things I cannot do. My knowledge, my intelligence will not be able to take me through all this. Thing. I need you to direct my step. Holy Spirit, I need you to guide me. I need you to give me a revelation, understanding that, and the knowledge of you. You need the Spirit of God to help you. Ask for that wisdom. Yes. Ask for that wisdom. Talk to the Holy Spirit right now.
at Gilgal Christian Center. Gilgal Christian Center, where burdens roll away. Gilgal Christian Center, a deliverance and prayer ministry.